Up until the mid-1800s, most people thought that when you made babies, the babies received a blend of characteristics. Like say, if someone with black hair and blonde hair had a baby, then it would have brown hair. This was known as blending inheritance, but blending inheritance was and is observably wrong. But luckily, Gregor Mendel, who is known as the father of genetics, came along just in the nick of time to investigate inheritance by carrying out breeding experiments on pea plants. He found that characteristics were determined by factors that were inherited, which did not blend together. Mendel discovered that when he crossed white flower and purple flower pea plants, the result was not a blend, but rather than being a mix of the two, all the pea plants were purple flowered. When Mendel fertilized those purple pea plants, he found that out of every four flowers, one was white. What he called factors, we now call genes. So Mendel also found that there are alternative forms of factors that account for variations in inherited characteristics. And those alternative forms of factors or alternative forms of genes are called alleles. So one form of a gene or one allele of a gene will be for white flowers and another would be for purple flowers. So both genes would result in a color, but which allele is expressed is what determines which color it will be. For each biological trait, an organism inherits two alleles, one from each parent. You always have two alleles for each gene. These alleles may be the same or different, so you would have inherited two alleles for your hair color, one from each parent. But how is one picked over the other? Alleles are represented by letters, capital and lowercase, and the combination of alleles present in the gene, or the combination of letters, is called the genotype. And how it is expressed is called the phenotype, so say having brown hair. Alleles can either be dominant or recessive, with dominant alleles being represented by capital letters and recessive alleles being represented by lowercase letters. So just as an example, if you inherited two dominant alleles, say both for purple hair, then you would have purple hair. If you inherited one dominant allele for purple hair and one recessive allele for pink hair, then you would have purple hair. But if you inherited two recessive alleles for pink hair, then you would have pink hair. And if you inherited two dominant or two recessive alleles, then you are homozygous for that gene. And if you inherited one of each, so one dominant and one recessive, then you are heterozygous for that gene. So the dominant allele is the one that, you know, dominates, whereas the recessive allele will need to be backed up by another recessive allele in order to be expressed. But all that being said, most characteristics are controlled by several genes working together. But if only one gene is involved, as is the case with things such as your eye color and the shape of your earlobes, then it is called monohybrid inheritance. And Punnett squares can be used to predict monohybrid inheritance. So Punnett squares are exactly as they sound. They're pretty much just squares. Perfect, like a window. So in this scenario, I'm gonna put a big P for purple hair and a little P for pink hair. And I'm going to put mm, two big ones down the side and two little ones, even though they're going to kind of look the same as each other. So in this scenario, we're going to put a big P, little P. So this one comes from here and this, this one comes from down here. So the one on the left is a big P and the one on the right is a little P because you take one from each. And this one is also the same. These are all the same. In this scenario, each possible outcome results in purple hair because the dominant allele, which is here, is present in every cross. So again, so let's try another one. I'm going to change it up a little bit this time and I'm going to put just one big P, so one dominant allele up or down the side. So in this case, we've got that one and that one, same again. But in this one, we've got two little peas, another two little peas. So in this scenario, you have um, a one in two chance of getting purple hair or pink hair. And let's take one more example. We're gonna change this one to a big P. So in this case, we're gonna have two dominant ones here, one dominant and one little one dominant and one little and boom de boom so in this case we've got two dominant here which means purple hair we've got one dominant here which still means purple hair 
one dominant hair, which still means purple hair, but this one is of course pink hair, because you've got two little recessive ones. And in this scenario, you have a 75% chance of having purple hair and only a 25% chance of having pink hair. This video was brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with over 20,000 classes in design, business, technology, and more. So you wanna learn how to solve a Rubik's Cube real quick? Like this? Oh. Join the millions of students already learning on Skillshare with a special offer just for you guys. You can get two months of unlimited access to over 20,000 classes for free. So sign up for your free two month membership by following the link in the description below and start learning today. It took me an hour. It literally took me an hour, but I didn't.